Hello friends. This is God of Fiction how are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto awaken the sage of six paths and get married with Yang Xiao Long. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. You know, the final battle of the war really wasn't all that spectacular. There wasn't a whole lot of flashy moves thrown around or someone screaming the name of a jutsu. Nope. The last battle of the fourth great shinobi war, the war that was one that truly encompassed the entire war, was really just a battle of ideals. The two most significant pieces of the war weren't fighting some goddess or any of that. Nope. They fought each other. Their ideals clashed together. One wanted to finish his original plan of eliminating everyone that was currently in power. Every single leader that had a hand in running the shinobi system into the ground. From their deaths he would take over and use his strength and fear to unite the world under one banner, his banner. The other. The other just wanted things to stay the way they were. He saw the potential in the aftermath of the world. He saw that the world could set aside their differences and unite under one banner themselves. The world could fight and die together, even if most of them were once bitter enemies. He knew that with just the right amount of pushing he could help guide that world to true unity. These ideals they held were both of equal merit. One ruled through fear, the other through the bonds that had been forged in battle. But which was correct? Neither of them were, and yet both of them both were. After all whoever won, that is whose ideal was the correct one. Yet in the end, that answer would never be revealed, at least to anyone outside the two combatants. Sasuke came the quiet almost desperate voice of a blonde teenager. He stood roughly 5 feet 8 and had a slim, yet muscular build. His most striking features were his bright sunny blonde locks that perfectly framed his face, yet was held back by a black headband bearing his village's symbol, and his deep blue eyes that shone like the purest of sapphires. He was currently decked out in a black and orange jumper that looked like it had seen much better times, what with the rips and tears in various places. The boy standing across from the blonde said nothing. Instead he used the silent treatment. This boy was done talking and only wanted action. It's over Naruto. You, the biju in every cage left alive, with that he crouched down low his hands stuck out to the side. Instantly bright blue energy, known as chakra, burst forth from his palm and began to crackle around him. The sound of a thousand chirping birds filled the air. Raven black locks of hair would flutter behind him his duck butt hairstyle helping it take shape. A soft sigh would escape the blonde's lips before he would nod. He had promised he would bring Sasuke home, and that was what he was going to do, even if it meant breaking every bone in his friend's body. The blonde would crouch down as a blue sphere of chakra would begin to appear within the palm of his left hand. He threw his hand out to his side and instantly the orb would grow in size. The energy that allowed it to keep its form could be seen spinning in every which direction. Its seemingly chaotic spinning was what allowed it keep its stable shape. At exactly the same time, both teens would suddenly begin to glow. Waves of chakra began to roll off them blasting the area around them. Rocks would float up into the air at the sheer amount of chakra that radiated around the two teens. The blue energy surrounding Naruto would slowly begin to change color. It started right from the center of his chest and expanded from there. The blue was replaced with a golden glow similar to that of pure sunlight. Opposite of the ball of sunlight, the blue energy that surrounded Sasuke would slowly begin to turn a deep shade of purple. It started from his head, specifically the single spinning eye that held many kinds of marks within it. It expanded from there and was soon a pure dark purple that radiated with a kind of hatred, the kind that could only be sated with revenge. The next few tense moments was some of the longest that the two teens had experienced in a long time. Both were soon sufficiently powered up and ready to go and after a final breath or two finally leapt forward, their arms reared back ready to slam their respective attacks into each other with every bit of power they could. They met and the next thing any onlooker would see was two of the strongest attacks ever, collide. The second the two sources of energies would touch everything would begin to tremble. The attack slammed against each other, both energies fighting for dominance. Both boys continued to pump their attacks with as much chakra they could neither realizing just what was going to happen. Second after second ticked away before any result was produced, it certainly wasn't one either boy expected. 
A large white dome of energy would suddenly surround the two before just as quickly imploding on itself. The next thing anyone would see was the quiet serene that was the Valley of the End, where two of the most powerfulest men on earth had fought their last battle. It was a sense of deja vu that would suddenly hit both teens as they realized just where they were. Sitting, floating before them was the man that had helped them defeat the rabbit goddess known as Kagaya. His name was Hagoromo Otsutsuki and he was the fabled sage of the Six Paths. The man that had previously defeated the rabbit goddess and had given birth to Ninshu, which would eventually become the shinobi system of present day. His face was impassive as he stared down both boys, arms crossed and his usual long black staff resting in his lap. Kagaya is defeated. Sealed away for good. Yet that wasn't the final battle, he said. Despite his ability to talk to them his accent was still rather archaic sounding to them. Did you both finally see your ideals to fruition? He asked despite already knowing the answer. Both boys stayed quiet at that, not know what to say or how to handle the situation, even the usually cool-headed Uchiha Sasuke. I gave both of you boys equal power so as to help both of you see your ideals, so that I could see your ideals. In the end neither of you will see it with your own eyes. Naruto would look down knowing what that meant. That last battle really was the last battle, their last battle. Yet he would never regret what he did. He couldn't. If he hadn't stopped Sasuke now, another war would have broken out. Two wars so close to each other, with said heroes of the war on opposite sides. The world probably wouldn't have survived. Both of you are dead, and yet you aren't, said the sage as he closed his eyes as he spoke. You both remind me so much of my sons. A small wistful smile spread across his lips at that. Yet you are so different from them. You each shows a path completely different from them, completely different from any previous incarnations of them before you. You both have done so much. A small chuckle escaped his lips before he nodded. You cannot return to your world, but I offer you a chance. A chance to help another world in need. At his words both teens looked forward, rather intrigued or in awe at the god of shinobi that floated in front of them. Raising an eyebrow Naruto would be the first to speak. Uh, wait, you mean you're giving us the chance to go to another world, is that even possible? He asked a bit skeptically. The thought of it was pretty damn cool sounding yet. Suddenly both teens would face fault as the sage shrugged and spoke. Probably. He grinned at them. I have spent a lot of time here. In this space of time and reality. To transcend the bonds of reality itself has given me a, sixth sense, he questioned as if he wasn't so sure. I cannot leave this place, except for certain oscillate. The bounds of other realities around ours. They come oh so close to touching, and yet have never actually done so. I can theoretically interact with these other realities but I have never tried it, having never really felt the need to, until now. Think of this as a second chance. If there was anyone I believe deserved one. It is you too. He said as for the first time they'd seen finally stretch his legs out to the white ground below him. He stood tall, taller than other two by quite a bit actually. I refuse. Was the simple two words that escaped the lips of the usual stoic one before the situation could even be explained. W what? Came the usual loud response from his friend. I have no interest in a world that isn't my own. My brother and family were never part of it, never left their mark on it so I have no reason to get involved with it, was the rather logical yet rather selfish answer from the raven-haired teen. B but, if there are others that need help then it's our job to do so, we can't just leave them to fend for themselves, what if they're facing a madara as well? Before either could continue on the sage had cleared his throat to grab their attention. Sasuke is correct. The world you choose to go to, it could and more than likely will be completely different from your own. In this reality there could be no moon or no ocean. You may even choose one where life might already be completely extinguished, this is not something you should take lightly, either of you. That is my answer. No need to think about something I have no interest in. I'm no hero. With that the raven-haired boy did the only thing he could. He turned on his heel and began walking. S. Sasuke. Wait. Before the blonde could reach out to grab his friend said Uchiha was already gone. The boy disappeared right before their eyes. Sasuke. Turning back towards the sage he would give him a questioning look. Sasuke, has come to terms with it and it seems he has passed on. He is with his family now. The words were solemnly implied. I see, 
he chose his family over everything else. It was a quiet statement, yet it left such a bad taste in the blonde's mouth. He wanted more than anything to do the same, to just give in and see his mother and father, to finally be with them and experience the joys of being surrounded by loved ones. Yet when the thought of another world suffering from a problem that he might be able to solve, shaking his head he looked up at the sage. I can't. I can't give up. Knowing other worlds out there may need help too. He sighed and ran his hand through his blonde locks. Naruto. You are a great man. No matter what you choose, you will remain one. No one would ever blame you for wanting to be selfish just this once. Naruto could feel it. At those worlds his resolve was beginning to wane. He was tired. So tired. He just wanted. No I can't. I wouldn't be able to face my parents or my friends. I couldn't look at myself if I knew I had simply given up and taken the easy way out. I'll see them eventually. It just isn't going to be now. He finished with a bright smile, his hand sliding up to cup the back of his head. The sage of the six paths smiled and nodded, if that is your choice then. Naruto. Raising his staff up he began to tap it gently against the white floor, causing the sound to fill the air of the white realm. Now go. Pick the reality that you wish to help. Just know I cannot guarantee anything. You may wind up being a completely different person in the end. You probably won't even be able to use chakra. But know this. You will never be alone. No matter what you may think. With one final smile Naruto would nod before turning. Before the blonde were what looked to be threads. Each of them were of different shades of colors. Blue, green, pink, black, gray, white. Hell he even saw a few different shades of orange. Despite all the different colors there was one that stood out the most. Whatever it was it was calling him. His legs pulled him to it almost instinctively. The thread that waved in the non-existent air was the most beautiful shade of ruby red that he had ever seen. Reaching forward he gripped the thread and tugged. The first thing that Naruto expected to feel when he pulled that thread was not having it pull back and take him with it. Which it did by the way. The thread grew longer slipping between his fingers and suddenly wrapped around his wrist tightly. Then it yanked back twice as hard. Naruto stumbled forward and the next thing he felt was a tight pain begin to build up in his chest. The pain in his chest would, over the next few seconds, grow in intensity and suddenly Naruto let out a strangled cry of pain. His hand clutching at where his heart was. W what the, what the hell is this pain? He grunted. It felt like something was being ripped from his body specifically where his heart was. Damn it! Were his final few words before he felt himself fall forward and everything went dark. Drip, drip, drip. Naruto knew this sound, it was so familiar to him. Like he had heard it a million times before. Cracking one eye open he sat up and began to stretch out, his arms going above his head. For a second his mind was completely clear of all thought. Then the sudden realization of what had just transpired hit him. Instantly he was on his feet and taking in the sights of his surroundings. The sight that greeted him was what he thought it was. The sewer that was his mindscape. If I'm here then, suddenly his face split into a wide grin. If he was here in this sewer then that meant that one of his oldest friends was here. Not being able to hold in his excitement he bound up to his feet and began to sprint down the hallway. It felt like an eternity passed before he finally reached his destination. The sight that greeted him couldn't bring a bigger smile to his face. Before him was the biggest fox-looking creature that he had ever seen sleeping peacefully. This creature was of course the almighty, Kayubi no Yoko, or as Naruto liked to call him. Oi! Furball! Wake your big furry ass up! He screamed out, cupping his mouth to make his voice even louder. What happened next would have surprised anyone else but not Naruto. One of the nine tails that laid behind the giant creature began to move. It moved incredibly fast and was coming down towards Naruto, intent to crush the blonde. Of course that was diverted when the blonde simply sidestepped it. It's nice to see ya too, Kurama. The tail retreated back behind the creature, which now had both eyes open. The creature's face split into a large toothy grin, showing off the giant teeth it used to eat annoying blondes. Next time you wake me up from my nap I'm gonna tear you to shreds. It bellowed out menacingly starring the blonde down. It raised its head up to look down at the blonde fully. Yeah yeah. Naruto simply waved the thread off before crossing his arms. His face became stony looking as he stood there. It was obvious it was time to get down to serious matters. 
So if I might ask. Why are you here? I figured when I died you would have finally been free. After all it's not like you're sealed inside me anymore. The way Naruto stood and spoke just now had brought back some rather interesting memories for the giant fox. The blonde sure could be just like his father at times. To be honest, I have no idea. The last thing I remember is the fight with your friend. Sasuke. Just before those last two attacks of yours had met I had felt a tug, he paused it was hard to describe it. It felt like he was being pulled away and placed into a stasis of sorts. Next thing I know I'm back here in this place, unable to get out. But at least the cage isn't here anymore. The creature seemingly shrugged before continuing. If I had to take a guess, it was more than likely something that, at this he was cut off by Naruto. The old sage gave me and Sasuke a second chance, at the mention of his teammate Naruto grew a sorrowful look, his eyes diverted to the water floor. Sasuke declined. But I cool say if I knew other people were in danger. But, I wasn't allowed to return to our world. He told me I had to pick a new world. I chose this one, well whatever world we're in I mean, he trailed off there at the end his thoughts still on his friend and brother in all but blood. The great beast could only sit there and digest it all. So his father had even been able to give people a second a chance? He really was a god. Shaking his head of the thought he turned his attention back towards the boy standing before him. I see, well in any case I haven't been able to access your senses so I have no idea what's going on outside of here. So I guess you'll just have to wake up now won't you? Naruto looked up about to question that when he saw one of those giant clawed hands move in front of him. Next thing he knew a giant red claw flicked him hard in the forehead. There was no pain but the sudden sensation of being flicked away was enough to surprise and jolt him awake. Well, I see you're up. The voice was soft yet firm. I half expected you to never wake up, what with the sorry state I found you in. Naruto's attention turned away from his thoughts on getting back on a certain fox to the figure that stood in the doorway just a few steps away from his bed. The figure was actually a woman. A rather ancient looking woman with long gray hair. Her wrinkles were long and she looked to be about 70 maybe 80 years old. Despite this though she reminded him so much of the aged Hokage that he once looked to as a grandfather. She was obviously old, but much like the Hokage she had this air of power to her. Well quit your gawking. Or can't you understand me? She asked raising an eyebrow at him. What she didn't expect was for it to be true. So busy that he was in studying her that he hadn't caught the first few things she had said but the last thing she said sounded like complete gibberish to him. Well sort of. He understood a word or two but that was about it. With a sheepish smile he simply shrugged his shoulders, his hand reaching up to scratch the back of his neck. I seriously don't understand you at all, was his reply in Japanese. Those words caused her to shake her head gently before she proceeded into the room. She seemingly glided across the room in her simple green dress and reached a hand out to him. Go on take my hand then. She smiled down at him. The action threw him a bit off and he could only plaster a lopsided grin on his face as he stared down at the hand. After a few moments he shrugged and reached out to take her hand. When he grasped her hand he suddenly felt a warm tingly sensation gush throughout his body. A few seconds would pass before he looked back up at the woman expecting something to happen. She kept that smile upon her lips before she finally began to speak, in what seemed to be perfect Japanese. How about now? Can you understand me? She asked. Naruto nodded his head enthusiastically. How this woman was able to go from speaking gibberish to Japanese in just a few seconds was beyond him. That's good. I was afraid my semblance wouldn't have worked. I've never heard your language before so I was a little skeptical. He took a moment to digest what she said before asking the one question that came to mind. What's a semblance? It was a simple question and yet it stunned her. While it wasn't necessarily common knowledge, it was talked about enough for most people to know what a semblance was. Not that everyone always found out what their semblance was. After all it was mostly used for fighting with a few exceptions, herself being one. Before I answer that may I ask where you're from? The question stumped Naruto. How was he supposed to answer that? He couldn't just come out and say he was from another universe. Wait, his eyes suddenly bulged out as he just came to realize that he was in another world. The thought suddenly excited him, he wanted to get out there and explore it, a growl from within him though brought him back to reality. Air, I, I don't really know. I can't remember. Last thing I remember was, sparring, with a friend of mine and then I woke up here. He struggled with the word sparring. 
He couldn't after all say he was in a life or death battle with his best friend after all. Her eyes narrowed as his stutter. This kid sure was a horrible liar. I see. Hmm. It's kind of odd isn't it? You would think if he was a friend he wouldn't have left you for dead in a forest filled with beasts that would enjoy tearing you limb from limb, especially one so young as you. He knew his half-hearted lie had been spotted and had been about ready to partially tell her why, when the last few words she had spoke registered with him. One so young as me. Wait, is she calling me short? The blonde was ready to jump up out of bed and yell at her when he looked down and realized something. His hand, the hand the old lady was holding. It was, so much smaller than he last remembered. Suddenly his eyes bulged out of his head and he quickly let go of her head. Standing up he would be greeted not with the slim, fit body of a 17-year-old that he was used to seeing. Nope, he was met with a skinny, unmuscled body of what looked to be a short and scrawny six-year-old. He was so shocked with the revelation that he hadn't noticed the furry red tail that swung free behind him. No, he screamed, large crocodile anime tears spewing forth from his eyes as he wept. His awesomely handsome body was gone. And to make matters worse he was reduced to the size of runt. He kept up his weeping for quite a few moments before he felt a hand placed on his shoulder. Looking up at the old woman with tears still streaming down his face he began to speak. I'm a runt. I'm a ruined. My awesomely handsome older body is goo one. Those words shocked the older woman. Older body. And gone. What? What was this child talking about? What do you mean gone? I don't think it's possible for someone's body to disappear or even revert to a younger age for that matter. Those words instantly sobered up the blonde. Crap, 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 crap. I can't believe I said that. Within his mind he could hear a deep chuckle. At least someone found this amusing. Shut up you big furball. Tell her. Tell the old woman. You've dug your grave. It's time to lay in it. The amusement was obvious. I mean what's the worst that could happen? You end up in a funny farm. Best case? You get someone that can teach you about this world. There were merits behind it. Yet, he couldn't just come out and say he was a hero from another world who had fought a rabid goddess before going on to fight his best friend and brother in all but blood. That he had been given a second chance by another god of sorts and had chosen this world as his second chance. It was just so preposterous. That it might work, he sighed. He couldn't be about to do what he was about to do, could he? Well you see, I'm, well I'm not from here, he trailed off looking away. Not from here? That I can tell. But please explain. Her voice was stern. The feeling that rose up in his chest from it brought back memories of his time with the elder Hokage. Another sigh escaped the blonde's lips. Well you're going to think I'm crazy but, I'm not from this world. Whatever world this is, I was. Well I was given a second chance of sorts. At least that's what I was told. He shrugged his shoulders as he turned back to look up at her, gauging her reaction and whether he would need to bolt out of there or not. Not from this world? A second chance? She pondered those words for quite a few minutes, if this was anyone else she would have laughed right then and there into their face. But with such an odd set of circumstances that had lead to this moment, well her thoughts were in turmoil that was for sure. The boy spoke as if he truly believed it. Every word of his, lie. I see. And if I may ask. What was this world like? And how old were you? Why were you give a second chance? Naruto sighed and looked down. This old woman asked way too many K's world there was a set of big nations and a bunch of smaller ones. The bigger ones basically controlled everything. The smaller ones were mostly trade nations. Some specialized in crafting, others in trading goods. He shrugged gently. But the bigger nations. There were five of them. They held most of my world's population and they were almost always in some kind of conflict with each other. Be it through open warfare or more covert methods. He paused to take a breath. I was 17 though. I was part of one of the bigger nations, its name was Konohagakir no Sato. The village hidden in the leaves. I was part of the shinobi forces, the military of our world. As for my second chance well, my world was once threatened by a madman. He wanted to conquer the world and turn it into a paradise for everyone. Yet his methods of achieving said paradise were crazy. In the end this one man had brought the world to its knees. Even as all five and many of the smaller nations stood united. It wasn't nearly enough. He held to much power. He was crazy strong with powers that nearly rivaled a god. 
or at least what I think a god has powers of. Anyways, yeah I fought him, alongside my best friend. We had done what an entire world had been unable to do. We fought him, with the help of a few comrades who were still standing, to a stand still. And then it happened, he was seemingly upon himself. Of another's master plan. A plan that had been hundreds if not thousands of years in the making. This being had been guiding the world along its plan, trying many times throughout the history of my world to achieve its end. Yet it never had been able to succeed, until now, its plan was, well it was the revival of a goddess. The rabid goddess known as Kagaya. She was an immensely powerful being that had once been a benevolent being that had ruled a kingdom. In an effort to bring peace to the world she had eaten a fruit from the holy tree of life. Doing that had brought into my world a new kind of power. We referred to it as chakra, it had given her godly powers. Creation and control of dimensions. Ability to simply conjure attacks out of thin air. It increased the strength of her body and her speed. It made her into a literal god, but this power that she had wanted to attain to bring peace to her world, had corrupted her. Instead she grew greedy, the need to collect more and more of this chakra became strong and soon she had begun to take over the world, encasing the humans of my world in these cocoons that would siphon off their chakra. Chakra was within all living beings in my world. But she had made a mistake. Before she had begun her conquest using her powers she had given birth to two sons. These two sons would go on to stop Kagaya and bring about a world filled with peace. But the peace wouldn't last forever. One of her sons had begun to spread his religion, known as Ninshu. It was a religion that showed one how to use their chakra. It was meant to connect the world as one. To bring unity. Yet humans in their infinite talent for destruction instead used the chakra to wage war against one another. Thus began a new era of war, this time the wars and battles would last for a very long time. From here things get a bit foggy. I'm, honestly not all the knowledgeable in history. I only know the previous part as the being that brought about these events had a knack for explaining all of his plans and stuff. He mumbled before sighing. Anyways yeah. I fought a goddess, and then I fought my best friend, who had wanted to unite the world through fear and power. I wanted to unite the power through trust and the bonds forged during the war. I mean, how many worlds could say that they had been able to put aside all problems and join together to fight a being that could destroy everything? Throughout this all the old woman stayed completely silent. She took in every piece of information and digested it, slowly going over it. It seemed solid enough, and it was much too long and detailed to be something that the boy had thought up on the spot. This was all just a bit much to take in. Yet, there was one thing he hadn't answered, despite giving all of this extra information up. You never answered. Why would you need a second chance? She was pretty sure of the answer already but, she had to make sure. W well, he paused his head looking down, in the final battle me and my friend. We, we killed each other, or at least that was what I was told. We were dead and yet we weren't. The sage that had spread Ninshu, his name was Hagoromo, had pulled us out of our world into his space. A space outside of space, time and reality. He had said that we had died too young and had decided to give us a second chance for our efforts in stopping his mother. But but my friend denied it, he wanted to be with his family. He had suffered too much to want to go on helping anyone else. He had been through a lot when he was younger you see. I mean I did too. I grew up without any parents, I didn't even know who they were until about a year ago. Anyways. I obviously took him up on the offer as much as I wanted to finally be with my parents and those that had died in the battle. I couldn't help but think that if I said no to this chance, how many others would be affected? How many others would fall into their own darkness and succumb to the hate that my best friend fell into, simply because I wasn't there to help them? How many others would die because I wasn't there to save them, whether I knew them or not? It leaves a bad taste in my mouth knowing I'd have sacrificed others for my own happiness. The old woman's look softened as the boy spoke. She could tell he felt so insignificant, yet the actions he spoke of told a different story. If this boy was to be believed then he had saved an entire world from destruction or enslavement, she didn't think anyone would fault the boy no matter what he chose simply because he had done so much already. Yet this boy had chosen once again to sacrifice his own happiness to save yet another world from itself. She shook her head. There really was no denying it. This boy was something special. Already he had her believing his story completely. 
I see, you, you are something special boy. I don't think I've met someone nearly as selfless as you. She smiled and squeezed his shoulder lightly. If what you say is true that is. She winked and nudged him playfully. I believe thought, it's hard to take in but, she could only continue to offer him a smile. But I do say. I think you've got quite a bit of ahead of you boy. After all you can't even to speak the language of this world, if you can't talk to anyone how do you plan on saving it? To say Naruto was surprised was an understatement. This old woman had literally taken everything he said for face value. She didn't even seem to suspect he was lying. Either this woman was too trusting, she was humoring him, or she truly did believe him. It was hard to tell. Yet when she asked that question he couldn't help but scratch the back of his neck and grin at her sheepishly. T true, I don't very well know where to start in this world. I can teach you. I may not have defeated a goddess like you have. But I've been around the battlefield quite a bit. Her grin turned toothy and despite her old age she still had a rather sharp set of teeth. Besides, who knows, you may not even have any of that power from your original world. If this is a new body, then you're probably not much more powerful than your typical child. At that she let out a throaty laugh. This caused Naruto to buff up his cheeks into a pout and cross his arms over his chest. Hey, I'm Konoha's number one most unpredictable and knuckled-headed ninja. If there's one thing I'm known for, it's for being a quick learner. I guarantee you in a few years I'll have learned everything I could about this world. My name is Ember, Ember Skies. She piped up interrupting his speech. Naruto, Naruto Uzumaki. He stuck his hand out in greeting. She gently took it and shook. It's a pleasure meeting YIF there's one place you should start, it's learning to speak the main language. A loud groan filled the room as she spoke. But but, I just woke up, correction. You woke up three hours ago. You've been talking so long that the sky has turned dark. She smiled and turned towards the window. Anyways come on then we have much to do and little time to do it in. But food first. With that she released his shoulder and made for the door. A loud rumble following just after that. She didn't even have to turn around to know what it was. A long stream of what she probably thought were curses in his native language soon followed. About an hour later we found the old lady, Ember, and the young boy, Naruto seated at a small round table. Naruto examined the place that this woman called home and to say he was surprised was an understatement. She had seemingly taken up residence in well, a giant tree. The base of the trunk, where they currently were, was enough to fit a spacious living room dining room and kitchen. Various knickknacks dotted the house and all of the furniture was made from wood. Taken from the hollowed tree itself, she had explained. Overall it was a very homey place. Though the tree wasn't quite so tall, it only had enough room for just a little over five floors. Supposedly the tree was situated just outside of the kingdom known as Vale. The central most kingdom and home to one of the most famous battle schools in the world, Beacon Academy. Ember had explained the basics of the world over dinner. The supposed origin of the humans in this world, a majorly summarized version of the history of said humans up to current times, dust, semblances, grim. It was all touched and by the end Naruto had a very basic idea of the world. He had been slightly surprised that there were actually two human species in this world. Humans and what were called faunus. Naruto was obviously a faunus, what with the furry red fox tail and matching ears atop his head. Ember had explained that Faunus were the minority in this world and were highly discriminated against. Though that was mostly because of the almost terrorist-like organize that a part of the Faunus population was part of. Guess no matter where I go I'm going to get stared at. Naruto had mumbled under his breath, but Ember had caught him. What do you mean? It was an innocent question, yet the look that crossed Naruto's face told Ember it was anything but. So he had launched into another explanation explaining everything about what had happened in Konoha, how he had been the subject of neglection simply for the burden he had carried, the Kyubi no Yoko. The beast that had been sealed inside of him by his father. How he had been unallowed to enter certain shops without getting death glares by the owner. Thankfully none of them had actually kicked him or gouged prices on him. But they certainly made their thoughts on him being there known. To say that Ember was appalled was one thing. She was absolutely livid and it was everything she could to stop herself from getting angry. This had certainly put the boy in a new light. He wasn't just strong in terms of body. But he was strong in terms of heart. He was truly a kind soul. One who had drawn the short straw so many times and yet, in the end always came out on top. 
After that Naruto launched into his final explanation on Kurama, and how during the war he had befriended the beast. He went even so much as to trust the woman with the knowledge that technically Kurama was still here. Inside him somehow, despite his death. I see that's interesting, she muttered this had raised a few questions. If this being was force of nature in his world then surely it would be something of equivalent power here. Or maybe it had been weakened by the world transfer. Only time would tell but it was certainly something she would talk about with the boy as time went. Yup. A loud yawn escaped the boy's lips before he pulled his hand away from hers and rubbed his eyes. She finally realized that despite this boy being the age of 17, he was still in the body of 6 year old. Standing up she picked the empty dishes up and headed to the sink before turning back around. All right off to bed with you Naruto. If you plan on being strong at all, you need to start with a proper sleep schedule. We've got a busy day tomorrow so sleep well. She had pulled him up from the chair and pushed him towards the stairs. Your room is the one you woke up in. Naruto yawned again, he was nearly asleep on his feet as he began the walk up the stairs and into his bedroom on the second floor. He was completely out before his head even hit the pillow. The next morning started way too early for the blonde's taste. The old lady showed just how well she could move when she came barging into his room at 4 a.m. Though while he was used to having to get up at odd hours of the days. After last night's ordeal and reliving some bad memories he would have liked bit more time to sleep. But he was roughly pulled out of bed and shoved into the connecting bathroom with the simple order to freshen up and meet in the kitchen when he was done. He found a pair of clean clothes neatly folded on his bed when he finally got out. His clothes consisted of a simple black short sleeve shirt with matching black sweatpants and tennis shoes. He blanched at the thought of wearing such ugly shoes but he couldn't complain. He had come into this world stark naked from what the woman had explained when she had found him. That fact that she was already planning on him staying long term brought a smile to his face. It felt good, having someone to care for you. That only solidified his thoughts. He would do everything he could to help the people of this world. Naruto soon found himself tucked away at the table, a big plate full of eggs, sausage, fruit and a big cup of milk and orange juice placed in front of him. His first bite of the food was, amazing. It almost rivaled the sheer awesomeness that was old man Tucci's ramen. Of course nothing would ever beat the taste of the food given to men by the gods. But this was a close second. Her cooking filled with various spices, just enough to give you the taste and tiny bit of burn, but not enough to scorch your mouth completely. After breakfast he found himself being dragged once again through the house. This time he went up the five flights of stairs to what he assumed was the attic, only to be amazed by the sight in front of him. Though he wasn't a particularly big fan of books. He knew the merits of at least sitting down to read one every once in the while. What he assumed to be attic though was actually a large library. It wasn't anywhere near as big as a big city's public library, but it was close. There was at least a few hundred books lining the shelves. Alright well then this is where we will start. I think the most important thing for you to do is learn about this world. But before you can do that you need to learn to read, write, and speak this world's language. The woman gave him a toothy grin at his groan. Don't worry though, it won't be an all day thing. One can't learn anything just cramming things into their head. You'll simply forget about it, so we'll go a little bit of it at a time. But you need to learn this language as quick as you can. As I said the night before. How do you plan on helping anyone in this world if you can't speak the most used language? She hated it when she was right, she sounded so much like his pink haired teammate. Alright, alright I give. I'll sit and learn this stupid thing. He crossed his hands over his chest and pouted. But I certainly won't like it, she grinned at him and nodded. She steered him over to a completely empty desk, save for a few select books and a pen and book of paper. Alright I've already prepared some things for you then. We'll be practicing until at least 10. That's roughly 6 hours alright? That's less than I'm sure you spent in school in your world. He grumbled but nodded. These are the books we'll be using and the pen and paper is what you'll be taking note these books aren't in your language I'll have to read it to you. Eventually you'll be able to study this yourself. He nodded at her explanation before gripping the pen and awaiting the lesson. By the end of the lesson Naruto was completely bored out of his mind, but seemingly a lot of it had stuck. He had learned the alphabet mostly, it was much simpler than Japanese, but he had been warned that it was only just the beginning. After all you now had to use all 26 of the letters in the alphabet to make up every other word. He had been told about words that would sound and look the same when written down, 
but depending on how it was used could have different meanings. It was roughly 10 o'clock by the time they finished, but before Naruto could dash off to do a bit of physical training he had been pulled down into the kitchen where a sandwich of ham, cheese, mayo and lettuce had been placed in front of him along with a glass of milk. Alright now that we're done with that I think it's time we get down to the real fun. Ember said standing above him with her hand on his shoulder. I've been thinking about it but I think it's time to see if you do still have your powers from your world. If not, then we can begin to try and see if you can use this world's power. Naruto nodded. Ember hesitated over the next thought but finally decided to just ask. I'm also curious, if you can hear me Kurama, do you know if you have any of your powers from your world? She had asked, wondering if said tailed beast could even hear her. Kurama says that he doesn't have any power, but he does feel, something, as he called it. He doesn't quite understand it completely but he's been looking into it as well. She was fairly surprised when Naruto answered back but noted. I see, if that's the case then Naruto, you may not have your powers either. Naruto could only nod before shrugging. Either way. I need to get stronger. I have to get stronger. Someone out there is going to need my help and I've gotta have the strength to do so. Ember only nodded before she turned. Alright, meet me out in the front of the tree when you're ready. We'll test you properly. Was all she said before turning and disappearing up the stairs of the tree. Don't underestimate her kit. She's a warrior. Much like that old coot of a Hokage you loved. I know. I could tell that right from the start. She's strong. And probably crazy strong too. He grinned. That just means she's the proper teacher to teach us. Us? Yup. After all you're new to this world and its powers too right? Then that means whatever she teaches you you can put to use as well. Inwardly the tailed beast was smirking. The kid was actually using that brain of his for once. I think the world might be ending already. You just used your brain for once. With that the fox broke out into a loud deep laugh. Naruto could only sputter out words before finally just shutting up and eating his food, all the while mumbling under his breath about stupid foxes. Roughly 30 minutes later Naruto found himself out front. He could see the old woman standing there waiting for him. She was in the same usual black dress she wore, a shawl thrown over her shoulders. A pipe also hung from her lips as she puffed on it gently. She nodded as he approached and stuck her her hand out to grab Naruto's. So I want you to do whatever it is you do to activate your powers alright? I'll be watching. You've got ten minutes to do what you can. After that we'll have deemed it a lost cause and we'll go from there. Naruto nodded before letting go of her hand. The old woman backed up a bit giving him a bit of room. From there Naruto began to concentrate. Inwardly grabbing for that usual liquid-like source of energy he could always feel in his world. What he was met with was, nothing. No reaction nothing. It was like he was grasping at an empty well in a hot desert. Absolutely nothing. The minutes ticked by and before he knew it the time was up. He was pulled out of his concentration by a hand on his shoulder and that usual warm tingly feeling. Anything. Naruto shook his head. Nothing. At all. It's so, depressing. Knowing that the power I spent my life training for is gone, Ember gently patted his back a few times. It's alright Naruto. You've hopefully got this world's power. And while I don't know if it can stack up to your world's power, ours is still quite something. She smiled gently before nodding. Alright. So I'm going to try something don't you worry about it alright? Naruto nodded and watched. He watched the old lady for quite a few minutes before suddenly he could see it. A faint glowing red energy began to surround her. It was faint at first but after a few seconds it grew stronger and stronger. Soon it was like a raging storm around her as the veil of red surrounded her, not unlike what a chakra cloak could do when he was younger. Then like a fist to the gut he felt it. Her power pressed against his body hard. It was bashing against something. Like a battering ram at an unmoving stone gate. With each hit the glow around Ember would flicker and the pressure within his gut and chest intensified. It wasn't long before he had fallen to a knee. He could also see the strain it was causing to the older lady who had begun shake. He was just about to push her away to stop her from hurting herself when he felt one last surge of power press hard against that stone gate. The glow around Ember flickered and the woman stepped away panting. Standing before her was Naruto with the same crimson glow. But after a few seconds it began to fade and be overtaken by a bright blue glow, much like when he charged himself full of chakra. He could feel the power surging through him. It was incredibly, it felt like chakra, 
yet it was completely different. Whereas when he had charged enough chakra for it to be visible he would get tired. But now, now he felt like he could keep this, glow up for days. What he didn't know was the Kurama could feel it as well. Within his body Kurama had taken on a crimson red glow. Looking down at himself Kurama suddenly grinned. It was playtime. With a chuckle he suddenly prepared for the next test. Suddenly the glow around Naruto wavered, flickering from blue to red and back. After a few seconds it turned completely red, along with Naruto's sapphire blue eyes. Ember sensing the change had been ready to jump in to stop him but a sudden deep voice spoke up. It's alright. Naruto is fine. I was just seeing what I could do with this power. The voice that came from Naruto currently was most certainly not Naruto. Raising an eyebrow she stepped forward and tightened her hold on his shoulder. Kurama I presume? The question was firm, with a hint of steel, she obviously didn't trust the demon. Yo. He chuckled and nodded. It would seem I still have the ability to take control of his body. You should hear him. He's throwing a hissy fit. He couldn't help but grin a toothy grin showing off his much longer canine teeth. The whisker marks on his face had grown much thicker and the nails on his hands had grown longer. Ember tensed up at those words, expecting to have to do something but she had been stopped by Naruto's body putting up his hand. Just wait before you do that grandma. I'm letting Naruto have his body back so he'll shut the hell up. Stupid brat. He grumbled under his breath darkly before nodding. Almost instantaneously the red aura dissipated away, leaving Naruto once again without his aura. Looking up at the woman he smiled sheepishly at him. Oops. He offered scratching the back of his neck. The woman sighed and face palmed at his reaction. The boy is suddenly taken over by a demon and all he can do is smile and act like it was nothing. She felt a headache coming on before she nodded. Reaching over she placed her hand on his head and patted him gently. Well it would seem we have our work cut out for us right? She smiled softly. I promise you Naruto. By the time I'm done with you you'll have enough training to take care of yourself in this world. Naruto smiled back on a granny. He chuckled but suddenly yelped. I hope you're ready. She slapped the back of his head before handing him a list. Here's a list of chores you have to do around the house. I expect them done daily. It's also a schedule to detailing when you'll have your English class, as well as what you should work on each day. Follow this and when I deem you ready we'll step up to the next level. Now then. Get to it, she pushed him back towards the tree trunk house. As he trotted up to the house he took a quick glance down at the list. What he saw made him face vault. The list had been written entirely in English. How the hell was he supposed to read this when he couldn't read it? Looking back he had been just about to say something but he realized that he was suddenly alone. He sighed and rubbed the back of his head. Things were going to be difficult for a while. Naruto's Pav, journal entry number one, one and a half years since arrival. Let's see, let's see. I don't really know what I should be writing about. This notebook or journal, whatever you want to call it, was given to me today by the old lady who took me. She had said something about it helping me to better understand this world's language as well as, and I quote, improving that chicken scratch you call handwriting. When I was a kid that kind of comment would have set me off for sure. Even now it still kind of irked me but I did admit that I could do a bit better in improving it. After all I will eventually go out into the society eventually and it wouldn't help me to simply go around beating and fighting everything and everyone. Solving things through violence just doesn't sit well with me anymore. So I concede this point to the old lady. Anyways onto my summary I guess. It's been roughly a year and a half now. I've learned to read, write and speak English pretty fluently. Though I'm told my accent is still pretty thick, and I do sometimes resort to my old language when I'm mad. But I've been getting better. Enough to where I can study on my own. So there's that. It was times like this I wished I could make my clones. I could just have them learn it all for me while I focused on training. But at the same time I don't think it would be something I would do, at least long term. Maybe because I wasn't putting my heart into it. I would after all be shirking off the duty and instead letting someone else do it for me. Other than that I've been getting back into shape, this body feels unnatural to me. Maybe because I can't feel the warmth of my chakra, but who knows. Either way it's mine and I need to be at tip top shape to do what I want. Which, I haven't actually thought about. It would seem pretty much all fighting in this world was done with weapons of some kind. Be they simple swords or much more dangerous weapons like this thing I was told was called a gun. It sounds cool. But not really my style, 
It seemed way too. Air what's the word? Lethal I think. Yeah it seemed like they were made to kill and I'd like to try to limit any killing I do. I was shown one weapon that holds promise. One that was different from what I was used to yet could still potentially be just as awesome. It's called a bow. Yeah I know, these were in my world too. But they were mostly only ever used by bandits. Maybe because they seemed pretty easy to dodge for a fast ninja? Then again there might have been some ninja that used them, who knows. Either way it seems like something cool to pick up. Other than that I was thinking of picking up something less lethal maybe like a club? Or maybe a staff? Oh, maybe a staff that turned into two shorter clubs? Oh that would pretty cool, anyways I think that's all I'll be writing for now. I'll try to keep this as updated as often as I can. Though it's not like I'm going to come here every day to write. Journal entry number 2, 3 years since arrival yo journal. It's been quite a while now, at least a year and a half. I have tried to write a few times but until now things have been just so boring around here and I don't think you want to hear me ramble on and on about the random chores I have to do and the training I've been going through. Anyways I'm writing here now to let you know of some pretty exciting things going on the last 3 or so months. I finally was able to head into the city nearby. I wasn't allowed out into the city till now because I still had a few problems with my English. But the old lady finally gave in and took me out to the city. It was freaking awesome. I saw all kinds of new and awesome things. I saw airships and all kinds of cool technology. This place blew the water out of my world when it came to technology that's for sure. But it still had its moments of nostalgia. Just as we entered the city and turned onto the main street, we'd seen a few figures dart past us and practically run up the side of a small brick building. They were soon zooming over the rooftops. They weren't quite as fast as some ninja I knew but they certainly could do some pretty cool acrobatics even without chakra to help them. A few moments after that we'd heard a loud roar. A grim had entered into the city and the ones that were tasked with stopping it had been those same figures. I had to beg and plead with all my might, even pulling out my trump card to let the old lady let me go and see it. It was over by the time we got there, but we had seen them at the very least hit it with the final attack. It was cut in two and before I could even get a good look at it, it had dissolved into nothing. It was actually kind of sad. The creature, even if it was mindless would leave nothing behind other than a few scary roars that might frighten some children. It kind of made me want to understand the grim. From what I read they were pretty mindless, driven only by the goal of wanting to destroy. What it was they wanted to destroy no one knew. They left animals alone for the most part and none of them seemed to want to destroy nature. They only ever seemed to want to destroy humans. Though I had read in one book that there were some Grimm that didn't actively seek out humans. Only if they happened to stumble into the Grimm's territory or threatened the Grimm did said creatures really attack. It had said something about these Grimm's being much more older and wiser or something like that. To me it sounded like the Grimm had grown tired of fighting and only wanted to be left alone. Kind of like old people now that I think about it. Moving on I had a bit more news as well. I'm finally able to use my aura at will. This means I can finally use my semblance. Oh I'm so excited to learn what it can do. The old lady I still have a bit more training before I can really get to use my semblance. Karama had said that he himself had a semblance of sorts but didn't elaborate on it much. Other than those few things it's been boring around here. Training's been going good as I think I mentioned before. I've finally begun to use a bow. The old lady is a really good shot, even for being so old. She had shot an apple off my head blindfolded and from a hell of a distance. Well that's all for now journal I'll be back soon to write some more. Journal entry number 3, 5 years since arrival so it has been 5 years. 5 years since I arrived in this world. It's been quite an experience, what with the few occasions of Grimm showing up and even a few of the old lady's friends visiting her. She had said it had been the first visitor in over 10 years. They had hung around for just a few minutes before they parted ways. After that the old lady had been wound up. Mad almost. Karama mentioned something about one of those visitors aura to be, extremely dark. What was creepy was that he had also said that it had been similar to Madara's chakra. Any questions after that fell on deaf ears. After that I had begun to pick up my training. The old lady had taken my training to the next level. She even began to teach me about dust after we finally figured out what my semblance was capable of. After learning about dust for so long I can pretty much sum it up to the jutsus ninjas used yet it wasn't Nekor own energy. 
If one was good enough they could toss around some extremely destructive spells like they were candy if they had the raw dust to do so. That's not including dust that was sewn into clothing and infused in weapons that allowed for even easier manipulation of the mysterious element. Dust is just so much more versatile in my opinion. Oh, I almost forgot. I mentioned the Grim that had wandered near the house right? Under Ember's guidance I had gone on to fight it, it was a different experience from fighting a human or even an animal. While I was fighting it, it had felt like I was fighting something lifeless, something that only wanted to destroy. Yet in the back of my mind I could feel something from it as well. A kind of, sadness? Though maybe it was simply rage? It was confusing even after going over the feelings with Kurama. Shortly after I'd taken the thing down Ember had approached me and begun a lecture on how the beasts fought and what drew the humans. Rather what the theory behind what drew them to humans was. A creature that was drawn to negative feelings, it sounded a hell of a lot like Kurama. Though whereas Kurama could simply sense the feelings. These beasts were drawn to them like moths to fire. It made large gatherings of humans dangerous without the means to protect themselves. Especially if there were negative feelings surrounding them. It's made me really wonder about the origins of the Grim. It's been lost to time, but if they are drawn to those feelings then maybe they have something to do with humans. I guess it's something to think about, man to think I want to think about something, hee <laughs> hee. Let's see, I think today I'd be, 22 years old. Yet I'm only 11 years old. I really miss my friends and village, journal entry number 4, 7 years since arrival. 7 years now, 7 long yet memory filled years. I can say now I don't regret grasping that thread that pulled me into this world. It drew me for a reason and while I haven't figured out that reason I won't rest until I do, whatever it may be. Hey, so anyways the old lady, there's been something odd with her the last month or so. She's been getting slower and slower and she's not the first one to get up in the mornings anymore. I think the years just might be catching up on her. But she still hits hard. I still have all the bruises she gave me last week during training. She said something about me getting too why. Hey. I guess he may be right. But it's not like I can't back my words up. I mean I did take down that large grim that was terrorizing the outer gates of Vale. Without getting caught too. I happened to be training nearby learning to mix arrows using dust and whatnot, when I heard a scream and then a loud crash. I had rushed over and had seen a merchant cart tipped over and a rather large bear like Grimm smashing it to pieces. The scream had come from a girl that had been thrown off the cart. There were a few other people trying their best to crawl away. Just when they thought they had gotten away the beast turned towards them and began to try and run them down. I wouldn't just sit back and let that happen and had jumped in to help. A few arrows later and I was the one being chased. Though I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. Who knew such a large beast could be so fast? The thing was on my so fast I barely had enough time to react. Unfortunately he destroyed my bow when I'd used it to try and guard. One strike and it was snapped in half. After that I had used my batons to pretty much beat the beast into submission. It escaped but it hasn't been back since so that's a win-win in my book. Anyways journal that's about it for now. Journal entry number 5, 8 years since arrival I should have seen it. I should have seen all the signs, the slowness of her moves, how inactive she was getting, the coughing. Damn it. It's been 8 years since I entered this world and the old lady that's been raising me is. Sick. She says it isn't anything serious and that she'll get better. But she's been this way for so long now, I, I don't know. I find myself doubting it. I feel so bad because of it there's just nothing I can do about it. I feel so weak and powerless, anyways things have been. Okay I guess. The old lady has been bedridden the last 4 months. I've watched her grow weaker and weaker and it's getting tougher to endure it. I don't know how much longer she'll last. Anyways journal I just wanted to update you and let you know, and it helps at least to write to let someone know my feelings. Journal entry number 6, 8 and a 1 half years since arrival. I, I give the old lady the credit she deserves, she's tough. Tough as nails. Today, she, she passed on. I had that feeling when I woke up today that it wasn't going to be a pleasant one and I was right. Hey, I won't forget her, ever, I don't ever regret coming to this world. I never will and I don't regret telling her about me that first day I arrived here. I don't regret getting to know her and I don't regret the bond I shared with her. She was that grandmother I never had. Well at least until I brought Tsunade back to the village. Hey. 
It's it's hard to explain but I know Ember went peacefully. I was by her side the entire day and when she finally passed on it was with a smile. Things are going to be tough, but I think it's time I get out into the world. So I think for now journal. This'll be my last entry. When I get back I'll make sure to fill your pages with all of the stories I can. Regular Pav. What did you think Karama? It was a nice looking place huh? It was, passable. But I'm not a fan of all the windows. It's just easier access for people to get in. True. But I don't think we'd have to worry about it too much. I mean it's not like there are ninjas here. I honestly haven't even seen a whole lot of action at all. At least none involving humans. Grim seems to be all we fight these days. Karama couldn't help but mentally nod. That's a good thing I think. Grim seemed to be much easier to deal with. After all they're just mindless beasts. Naruto nodded. True true, he said out loud. Stopping he looked down and noticed a lean coin on the floor. Hey. Nice. He reached down to pick it up. It was just his luck that he did. Not even two seconds later the sound of glass above him could be heard breaking. A shadow flying right over Naruto had caused him to hit the floor and roll forward. When he righted himself he noticed a red cloaked figure just standing up from her position on top of a man in a black suit. It was a pretty imposing sight to see a petite young woman with black and red hair and a large scythe being deployed as it leaned against her shoulder. Looking at the broken window he noticed more of those black suited men brandishing swords and glaring at her menacingly. Well then, drawled a voice just out of Naruto's sight. Get her. It ordered and all of a sudden a flood of black suited figures stormed out of the shop. Everyone within the room, seated at desks, watched the clock stationed just above the chalkboard. It was the last class of the school year. This was probably the slowest day of the entire year for them. Everyone watching the clocks and waiting for that final class of the day to roll around. So here we find one of our heroes of this story, doing the same thing everyone else was doing. She had short black hair with red tips and she was dressed in what looked to be a black and red battle dress, black hose and black and red lace-up boots. She also had wrapped around her neck the ever-familiar bright red cloak. The most unique feature about her though were her bright silver eyes. They contrasted well with her outfit, drawing attention to her face. Overall most would call her cute or adorable. Looking up at the clock she couldn't help but want to throw her hands up in exasperation. The clock wasn't moving fast enough. Though the teacher drawling on and on about history, even in the last five minutes of the class, didn't help. After a few more seconds of clock watching she decided to stop. It's her tie. Instead she busied herself with her mental checklist of the things she was going to do now that school was out for the year. Let's see, arcade, weapons store, bakery next to the weapons store, and then the dust shop. As she thought each one she would mark them off her mental checklist. It was going to be a fun time. It was at that moment that the bell would ring and before anyone could move, a small gust of wind blew through the classroom. Everyone knew right away what it was when rose petals could be seen scattering in the air. It had taken the girl just a few moments using her speed to reach the locker room that housed the students' weapons. Most of the students in the school were heading here now, but she was the first and it wasn't long before she had withdrawn her weapon, a large higher caliber sniper scythe named Crescent Rose and made her way off the grounds and out into the small city located on the island of Patch. She was Ruby Rose and she attended a small school that taught people how to fight and defend themselves. The school taught you how to be a hunter. Being a hunter had always been Ruby's dream. The thought of helping people and being able to fight large monsters was just sheer awesome. Hunters helped keep the peace and that was something that Ruby could get behind, after all it was in her blood. Both of her parents had been hunters. Her uncle had also been the one to teach her how to properly wield Crescent Rose too. Ruby darted past and around all of the students just exiting their classrooms. Her goal was either one of two people, one being her older sister, well half-sister, named Yang Xiao Long. Yang was about two years older than Ruby and was slated for Beacon Academy next year. Ruby was sad to see her sister go. She would certainly miss the blonde woman. But at least she'd still be able to see her on the weekends or something. Beacon was after all located just across the harbor in Vale City. The other target was her uncle, Kirao. The one that had taught her everything she knew about fighting. Without him Ruby probably wouldn't have been a hunter. Nope, she would probably be some kind of bland high school girl that went on to do something boring with her life. That thought made Ruby shudder. 
She had been just about to rush into the classroom in front of her when the door was opened and out came one of her targets. It was a man who stood a little over six feet tall. He was thin, yet muscular and wore a simple black suit. Not being able to stop herself Ruby ran right into the stone wall that was her uncle. Whoa there Ruby. What's the rush? He asked gently looking at the girl that was now sprawled out on the floor. Ruby laid there with swirls in her eyes for a few moments before shaking her head and sitting up. Oh, Uncle Kirao. I was actually just coming to tell you I'm going into Vale for the afternoon. She smiled and stood up brushing off any dirt from her skirt. Kirao raised an eyebrow before nodding. All right. I'll let your father know when I see him. Yang too. He returned the smile. His own bright silver eyes twinkling as he watched the young woman in front of him. She looked more and more like her mother each and every day. What are you going to veil for anyways? He asked as he turned and closed the door. He signaled for Ruby to follow him as he began to walk. Ruby nodded and did so. Oh I figured, I would go to the arcade for a bit before heading over to the weapon shop to pick up some more ammo clips for Crescent Roads. Probably get some more shells too. I also need to restock on some dust. She smiled as she strode next to him, almost bouncing on the balls of her feet. The silver-eyed man nodded. That sounds like a plan then. Hope ya have fun Ruby. They had just reached the entrance of the school. Stopping he would reach over to ruffle her hair before pushing her away. Enjoy the free time. But make sure you keep up your training. He waved her off before turning and disappearing back into the school. Ruby waved back then turned to make her way out towards the landing docks for the airship. She was certainly going to be in for quite a hectic afternoon. Ruby waved by to the shop owner as she pocketed a few of the snacks she'd just purchased from the bakery. Of course she also had a few cookies in the other which she had proceeded to scarf down in just a few bites. As she walked she pulled out her scroll and checked the time. It read, 7.06 pm him that'll give me juiced enough to get some dust before the last airship leaves for patch. With a plan in mind she slipped her scroll back into a pocket on her dress before proceeding down a few blocks. In the meantime she had slid her headphones on and had begun to listen to one of her favorite songs. With a quick wave to the clerk at the counter she proceeded into the back where she picked up a magazine and began to browse through it. Hmm that's pretty interesting, oh oh, look at that, that's just awesome, as she drooled over the weapons magazine she had been completely unaware of what was going on around her, the music didn't help any either. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find a halfway decent dust shop open at this time of night? questioned an orange-haired man in a black bowler's hat and long white coat. Please. Just take my lean and leave. Now now. No need for any of that. No one's here for your money. Turning to face the group of men in black suits and red ties he nodded to the side towards the dust tubes. Grab the dust. The men silently went about their work, producing suitcases for dust crystals in a large case full of empty dust canisters. They proceeded to empty the store of all of its dust in a quick and orderly fashion. One of the black suited men made his way into the back, checking for any more dust. That was when he spotted what looked to be a teenager. Raising his red blade up he proceeded to prod the girl in the back with it. Raise your hands where I can see them. The black and red haired girl turned around to face her would be thief. She hadn't heard him the first time so she pulled her headphones down. Yes. I said raise your hands where I can see them. He held up his blade for emphasis. Raising an eyebrow the girl would talk, Are you, robbing me? Yes, he answered a bit hotly, his patience wearing thin. Oh, in the next moment the man would find himself sent flying with a hard punch to the gut. He hit the magazine rack on the opposite wall causing everyone in the shop to turn their attention to the two. The man in the bowler had would nod his head at the girl, but otherwise was completely uninterested as he continued to study the crystal in his hand. A few of the suited men rushed her with weapons drawn, guns ready to fire. They wouldn't get a chance to do anything though. In the next moment the girl in the red cloak rushed right at them. The single man in front was caught completely surprised when she suddenly sped up. The next thing he knew he was flying out of the window. Two pairs of boots planted firmly against his chest. With a grunt he hit the ground, completely knocked out. The girl now outside stood up a large black and red scythe deploying its blade over her shoulder. With a surprising amount of skill the scythe was swung up and around her body a few times before she slammed the blade into the ground, the barrel of the scythe pointed right at them. Well okay then, nodding at the men beside him, the orange-haired man pointed his cane towards the girl. Get her. 
The men proceeded to pour out of the shop, roughly five or six of them. They assumed she was just a snot-nosed kid that had got a lucky shot in. She proceeded to prove them wrong. Using the scythe's handle as a pivoting point she displayed just how acrobatic she was when she spun around and slammed both her boots into the face of one man sending him flying. Using the momentum she spun around once again, pulling the scythe up out of the ground and landing on her feet. She spun the blade behind her and pulled the trigger causing the scythe to fire around into the wall of the dust shop. She used herself around before stretching her arms out and spinning it up and slammed it into the gut of man sending him sailing up into the air. With the weapon still going up she suddenly twisted sending the weapon then slamming into the face of another and sending him sailing into the two guys behind him. In the next moment one of the men would draw an automatic weapon and began to fire. Not a single shot could hit her when she began to fire her scythe in rapid succession, using the recoil of the weapon to change directions almost instantly. With one last shot she fired forward right towards the man and slid underneath him kicking him up into the air. She then dug the blade down into the ground and used the momentum and the scythe as a pivot to spin up and around allowing her to plant both boots in the man's face just as he was about to land sending him flying down the street. It was one thing to suddenly see a black and red blur flying by right overhead out of the window of a store. It was another to see that same black and red blur display such skill with a rather deadly looking weapon. It probably made it harder to believe for the blonde watching the display that said black and red blur was actually a girl that looked to be about as old as him. Well that was a thing. He said mostly to himself as he watched the girl begin to kick the living crap out of few dudes that had rushed her and the way she used that weapon. It was pretty ingenious too. Instead of fighting the recoil she used it to her advantage using it to gain the upper hand and stay somewhat unpredictable in her movements. To be honest that was pretty damn awesome. Naruto muttered and watched on from his position in front of the broken dust shop window. Neither of the other two left standing noticed him just yet and that was fine with the blonde. You guys were worth every penny, you truly were. The orange haired man said before sighing and throwing the cigar in his mouth down to the street. Putting it out with the cane in his hand he would shrug. Well read. As fun as this evening has been I've got places to be. With that he raised his cane up and tossed a bright red crystal at her. An aiming reticle popped up on his cane and he fired just as the crystal hit the ground. Naruto felt that was the perfect time to intervene and rushed in. In just a moment he had appeared in front of the girl with his hand stretched out. Just as the crystal exploded a large blue shield formed from his hand. It took the brunt of explosion before the shield would seemingly shatter into tiny, bright blue particles. Ruby, despite being a tad bit stunned smiled sheepishly at her savior, thanks. No problem, but I think he got away. Naruto pointed out as the dust parted. Both turned and began to look around before noticing a figure climbing the ladder on a building just down the street. You alright if we go after him? Ruby asked the confused shopkeeper that had just exited his shop. He shrugged his shoulders and that was good enough for the two teens. Well let's go then, right? She answered before they both shot off after the thief. Stop. Ruby said just as they reached the top of the roof. The orange-haired man was within their distance now. Turning he grinned. Well aren't you a persistent one? Oh and look you brought a little friend. He suddenly smirked and jumped off the edge of the roof. Reaching forward Ruby stopped just as the roar of an engine and the image of the man standing within the bay of a bullhead. Producing another bright red crystal he grinned at the pair. It's the end of the line for you too. He tossed the crystal and in a repeat of before he aimed at it using his cane. The shot fired though was much bigger and before either of the two could evade or defend they'd felt the rush of wind and heat of the blast. Looking up though they didn't feel any of the pain and the reason stood before them. A large bright purple-ish shield spun in front of them, projected from the hand of a tall blonde-haired woman dressed in typical schoolteacher clothing, though a tattered black cape did show a bit of personalization to her outfit. With a hump she dropped the shield and suddenly stepped forward, swiping the air with a black riding crop. Suddenly long purple beams shot forward out of the air and slammed into the vehicle causing the pilot to fight to keep control of the bullhead. The thief growled and after catching his footing rushed towards the pit. We got a huntress, was all that was needed to be said for the pilot to leave her seat and proceed towards the open bay door. The orange-haired man took the pilot's seat and proceeded to take control of the airship with practiced ease. He turned the ship preparing to take off but before he could a large thundering, black cloud appeared overhead. 
Thick shards of ice suddenly began to impact the bullhead causing the man to move his head as one suddenly impacted the pit window shattering it and stuck right into his chair. The next few moments were tense as the woman in the bullhead's bay began launching a series of fireballs at the blonde huntress. The spells were easily defended with a simple shield but it was obviously just a ploy when the fireballs exploded into a wet lava-like substance. With a twist of her arms the shadowed woman caused the lava to explode upwards where the huntress had just been standing. The blonde huntress reacted and began to wave her riding crop around picking up the ripped up roofing debris and formed it into a long spear. For a moment the spear hovered just above her before she would swipe the air with her crop causing the spear to launch forward. A few fireballs were thrown at the spear causing it to break up but it would suddenly reform into a loose spear shape. It was at this time the bullhead would suddenly turn causing the loose debris to simply skid and bounce off the top. With the debris all spread out the blonde huntress had just about been ready to pull the floating debris together but a sudden explosion of red fire from the bay caused it all to disintegrate into ash. It was at this time Naruto and Ruby decided to join in. Ruby hoisted crescent rose up in rifle form and began to take shots at the woman. Each shot was simply blocked. Naruto had done the same thing. Drawing a bright red bow, he formed a few arrows made of dust and let them fly. After a few shots the shadowy woman twisted her arms around once again before swiping at the three figures. A line of fiery red whirlpools formed beneath their feet. Naruto proceeded to tackle Ruby out of the way and the blonde huntress dived forward. They stood up just in time to see the bullhead turn and rocket off over the city. With the battle over and the adrenaline high coming to an end Naruto threw up his arms over the back of his head. Well damn. That was awesome. Ruby was suddenly upon the blonde huntress who had just turned to address the teens. Can I have your autograph? I hope both of you realize that your actions tonight will not be taken lightly. You not only put yourselves in danger, but others as well. If that battle had gone just a little bit differently, the tone that the blonde huntress spoke with was like that of one talking to a child who had done something bad. As she spoke she paced around the room, her heels clicking against the hard stone floor. But they started it. Ruby tried to explain only for the blonde to interrupt her. If it was up to me, you both would be sent home with a pat on the back. She paused here looking at the scroll in her hands before suddenly turning. And a hard slap on the wrists. With that she slapped her riding crop to the metal table causing the dark-haired teen to let out a small leap. But, there is someone here that would like to meet you too. She stepped out of the doorway to reveal a figure with dull silver hair and brown eyes. He was dressed in a simple dark green themed suit. He carried a plate of large chocolate chip cookies in one hand and a mug of coffee in the other. Ruby rose, he leaned forward to examine the girl, his brown eyes narrowing as he took in half, silver eyes. You um, yeah that's not creepy at all. Naruto thought inwardly with a snigger. This caught the attention of the silver haired man and caused him to turn his attention. And you, Naruto Uzumaki correct? Naruto nodded as he crossed his arms, his face set into a simple grin. I see. If I might ask, where did you two learn to do this? He gestured to the large scroll Glinda held in her hand. Ruby was the first to answer. You uh, Signal Academy? It sounded more like she was asking a question. They taught you to use one of the most dangerous weapons ever designed? W well, it was one teacher in particular. I see, he set the cookies down. Almost instantly Ruby reached forward stuffing her face full of cookies. One might have even heard a growl when Naruto had attempted to take one. Note to self, never take this girl's cookies. Naruto could hear a deep chuckle resound through his head. It's just that I've never seen someone as skilled with a scythe beyond a dusty old crow I know. What came next was a rather undignified answer from Ruby as she tried to speak around all of the cookies crammed into her mouth. Stopping she quickly finished off her cookies before wiping her face. With a mumbled sorry she repeated what she said. Yeah that's my uncle Crow. He's a teacher at Signal. I was complete garbage until he took me under his wing. But now I'm like. She proceeded to make the stereotypical karate sounds, complete with a wave of her hands as she chopped the air. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at her antics. She was pretty cute when she did that. His chuckling caught the attention of Ozpin. And what about you him? Where'd you learn to utilize dust like that? It was at that point that the scroll showed the shield that he had made as well as the various amounts of arrows he fired off. W well would you believe me if I said I was taught by an old lady who lived in a tree? 
Naruto said nervous with a scratch to the back of his head. He couldn't tell whether Ospin believed him or not. My grandmother taught me and she lived in a giant tree just outside of the kingdom of Vale. She was a retired huntress. Ospin nodded before taking a seat as well as a sip of coffee. I see, another sip later and he started in on Ruby. What is an adorable girl like yourself doing at a school designed to train warriors? W well I want to be a huntress, so you want to slay monsters? Yeah, I only have two more years left at Signal and then I'm going to apply to Beacon Academy. See my sister is starting there this year and she's trying to become a huntress. And I'm trying to become a huntress because I want to help people. Our parents always taught us to help others so I thought I'd make a career out of it. The police are alright but being a huntress is just so much more romantic and exciting and cool and just, she trailed off with an girlish squeal of excitement. And how about you, Naruto? Why did you learn to fight? Naruto expecting this couldn't help but grin and shrug. Well it's in my blood and how I was raised. See I lived outside of the kingdoms in the wild. I'm sure you can see why learning to fight would be required. He trailed off looking down, after a moment he looked back up. But the main reason I learned is actually similar to Ruby's I want to help people and from what I've seen, read and heard being a hunter is the best thing to help. After all nothing's more important than protecting the peace we have right. He smiled before sighing. But I'm a year off from applying to Beacon Academy as well. Ospin stayed quiet with his fingers steepled in front of him. Looking at the two he digested the information before nodding. Do you know who I am? Naruto shook his head but Ruby piped up with a comment. You're Professor Ospin, the headmaster of Beacon. At this Naruto really took a look at the silver-haired man. After a moment he finally realized who this man reminded him of. Kakashi Hitaki, though this man was a lot more laid back. So you want to attend my school? More than anything? Yup. With a glance over at Glinda who could only make an annoyed sound and a shrug of her shoulders Ospin would turn his attention back to the two. Well okay then. Welcome to Beacon Academy. He stood up and offered the two a small nod. Classes begin in just a few weeks time. I hope you're both ready. With that the two adults turned and walked out. There was a moment of complete silence before suddenly a loud squeal of excitement raced throughout the building. Inside the interrogation room one black and red haired bundle of energy was seemingly bouncing up and down in her seat and chanting something about this being a dream come true. She was pulled out of her excitement when the sound of laughter reached her ears. Looking over the boy that had saved here was laughing at her antics. Oh oh, I forgot, she paused before smiling at him. Thanks for saving me earlier. I probably would have bit the dust if you hadn't done that whole shield thingy. Naruto's laughter died down before he could grin back. No it's cool, I couldn't have let such a cute girl like yourself get hurt. He reached forward sticking his hand out to her. Name's Naruto by the way. Naruto Uzumaki. Ruby suddenly felt her cheeks grow warm but she nonetheless reached down to take his hand. Ruby rose at your service. She matched his grin. Wow though Beacon Academy? It really was a dream come true. Yup, I'm kind of surprised myself. At least now I will have something to do. I honestly had no idea what I was going to do for the next year. Well besides train. Ruby couldn't help but smile as she stood up. Yeah things at Signal sure was going to be different without my sister there but now it won't be so bad I guess. As she began to think about it she'd be leaving everything behind. Her friends and all of her family besides her sister. The girl felt the nervous all of a sudden. But before she could stew on the feelings any longer she was pulled out of it by the blonde that sat next to her. Come on Ruby. Looks like we can leave now. I can walk ya home if you'd like. Looking up she'd seen he had already strode across the room to the exit. You are uh, air. Well I live across the bay on the tiny island there. Patch. Naruto shrugged at her. Sounds cool, never been there before. I can at least walk ya to the airship docks then. Ruby nodded. S sure. Instantly she felt that same rush of heat return to her cheeks. Well come on then no reason to waste time, she said shaking her head of the heat. Oh I just can't believe that my baby sister is coming to beacon with me. This is the best day ever. Beamed a rather brightly haired woman. She had the brightest blonde hair and the softest of violet eyes. She wore a simple tank top covered by a short sleeved brown leather coat, black short shorts covered by a brown leather half skirt. Her ensemble was finished with a pair of brown leather boots that stopped just below her knees. Please stoop. 
Ruby pleaded as she felt her sister once again glomp her for the umpteenth time that day. Oh but I'm so proud of you Ruby. Come on sis it really was nothing at all. What do you mean nothing? It was incredible. Everyone at Beacon is going to think you're the bee's knees, Yang exclaimed excitedly. I don't want to be the bee's knees though, I just want to be a normal girl with normal knees. What's with you Ruby? Aren't you excited? Of course I'm excited it's just, I got pushed up two years to attend Beacon. I don't want anyone thinking I'm special or anything. Ruby sighed and looked down slightly put off. She really was excited but. Those nerves. They really scared her. Everyone attending Beacon is going to be older and probably stronger than her. More mature than her. Ah but Ruby you are special. Ruby instantly recognized that voice. Standing behind the pair was a sunny blonde haired boy with brow sapphire blue eyes. Though she certainly wouldn't admit it Ruby had really been hoping that she'd have seen Naruto sooner. After all he had been bumped up a why it's good to see you. She smiled and waved at him. The blonde smiled and waved back as he fully approached her. Yang watched them for a second before letting a small grin spread across her face. Ooh, is this the boy you said saved you? Yang said throwing her arm around her sister's shoulder. Why yup. Yang studied the boy that had approached them. The teen was wearing pretty simple clothing consisting of an orange hoodie with the sleeves rolled up. One could see the peaking of a black shirt underneath. His pants were simple black jeans and a pair of red converse with white and black laces. Overall he was a pretty good looking boy. Yang definitely approved that was for sure. Reaching out with her fist she would give him a bright grin. I'm Yang. Ruby's awesome old sister. Naruto smirked and reached out. The two bumped fists. The action had caused quite a few nostalgic memories to flood his mind but before he could let them take over he answered. It's a pleasure, I'm Naruto, Yang nodded. It was at this time that a small chime rung throughout the airship. Looking up the three saw a newscast pop up on one of the hollow screens. The robbery was led by the notorious criminal named Roman Torchwick who continues to evade the authorities. If you have any information on his whereabouts please contact the Vale Police Department. Back to you Lisa. As the man spoke mug shots of the man that Ruby and Naruto had fought popped up on the screen. Hey so that was his name huh? Naruto asked mostly to himself but Ruby and Yang both nodded. Thank you Cyril. In other news this week's Faunus civil rights protest turned dark when members of the White Fang disrupted the ceremony. The once peaceful organization has now disru. It was at this moment the newscast was shut off. In its place now stood a hologram of the same blonde haired woman that Naruto and Ruby had talked to just a few weeks ago. Who's that? Yang asked only for her question to be answered a moment later. Hello and welcome to Beacon. My name is Glinda Goodwitch. You are among a privileged few who have received the honor of being selected to attend this prestigious academy. Our world is experiencing an incredible time of peace and as future huntsmen and huntresses, it will be your duty to uphold it. You have demonstrated the courage needed for such a task and now it will be our turn to provide you with the knowledge and the training to protect our world. With that the hologram would phase out. It was at that moment that someone would shout out that Beacon was finally coming into view. The airship descended down through the clouds allowing the school that sat upon the cliff to come into view. Oh woo look at this view. Ruby rushed right on over to the large window of the airship. Look you can see signal from here. She pointed it out as Yang and Naruto stepped up to either side of her. I guess home isn't too far after all. Beacon is our home now. Yang said sliding her arm back around Ruby's shoulder and pulling her into a half hug. Ruby nodded at that before turning back around to enjoy the view. It was at this point that a blonde on the other side began to make gagging sounds. Next came the sounds of his movement as he began to look for a trash can. I guess the view isn't for everyone huh? Naruto asked with a chuckle. Well it was a nice moment while it lasted though. Wonder who we'll meet? Yang pipped up. Leets just hope they're better than Vomit Boy over there. Ruby answered with a shrug. Hey Yang, Naruto asked looking down. Yeah, you've got some vomit on your shoes. Looking down Yang would begin to freak as she tried her best to wipe it off. Gross 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 gross, she chanted over and over before reaching over for Ruby's scarf. Ruby dashed away before Yang could grab her. Ew get away get away. Yang proceeded to chase Ruby around. Come on let me use that scarf. Naruto watched the two with a grin. Looks like things sure was going to be interesting a beacon. 
The End